Famous Funnies, A Carnival of Comics, was the second comic book done by the Eastern Color Group. Printed in 1933, it was 64 pages with a 10 cent cover price. It was the first retail comic that was distributed to the public as it was given away only through chain department stores. Eastern Color Printing worked together on creating and got George Delacorte of Dell Publishing to publish the book. After the first issue, Dell Publishing, not seeing any profit, decided to stop publishing the comic. MC Gaines sought to convince his boss Wildenberg that they could make money selling these comics on the newsstand. Wildenberg had a hard time believing anyone would pay for a comic book. To prove his point, Gaines took a few of his issues around, put 10 cent stickers on them, and went to local newsstands over the weekend. He told the newsstands what he was testing to see if these could sell, and that he'd be back Monday to see how they're doing. Well, Monday came around, and to his surprise, they had all sold out. Other freebie comics done at this time included the 100-page Century of Comics with a print run of half a million copies. From there, Wildenberg was really interested in publishing a higher level of a comic book with reprints of famous comic strips and sold for 10 cents. He tried to get many companies to hop on, but none would. Among those to turn him down were Oscar Fitz, Alan Douglas, known as the brains of Woolworth's department store. After much deliberation, he decided a 10 cents wasn't worth it. Many other stores to turn him down included Parents Magazine. They just couldn't see anyone paying 10 cents for old comics they had already read from the newspapers. The syndicates didn't see it selling either. They remembered both Comics Monthly and The Funnies trying and failing at selling comic books. Finally, Eastern Color owner George Janosek stepped in and asked George Delacorte of Dell Publishing to form a 50-50 partnership in a 10 cent comic magazine for the newsstand. He agreed, but the two were stopped cold by the distributor, American News Distribution, refused as they remembered Dell's The Funnies failure from a years before. The two then decided to go to the retail chain stores again and got some of them to sell the comics at 10 cents each. Famous Funnies, known as Series 1 because of duplicate names, used material previously reprinted from the first Famous Funnies and Century of Comics. It was 64 pages, had a print run of 400,000 copies, and they all sold out within 30 days. Not one single copy returned. Eastern wanted to go back for a second printing, but Dell wouldn't agree. Apparently, advertisers felt using comic books was beneath them. Still, they sold out the print run, and the companies made $2,000 profit. One of the biggest long-time publishers of comics at this time was Couples in Leon. They published books in different uh, format sizes and had a, a popular line that had been running for a few decades now. Possibly the most successful was Bringing Up Father, which was now up to issue number 24 in the square shape size. He would eventually run 26 issues over the period of 1919 to 1934. They also released Joe Palooka, a one-issue, one-shot in 1933, no number on the title. Moon Mullins, number seven, came out, and this was the seventh and final issue, uh, launched originally in 1927. The popular Mutt and Jeff was up to issue number 18 at this time. And Tilly the Toiler was at number eight and this was the final issue and year for that title as was winnie winkle ending with issue number four couples and leon gave us little orphan annie number eight in cosmic city was its title and this was part of the very popular book series and it would run from 1926 to 1934 and they also put out dick tracy and dick tracy jr and how they captured Stooge. This was a Couples and Leon one-shot released in 1933. Dimensions were 7 by 8.75, a hardcover with a dust jacket featuring reprints. Couples and Leon also gave us Men of Daring. This was a hardcover book with slick paper released in June of 1933 with a black and white cover and black and white interior, a one-shot. And Smitty at Military School had originally started in 1928 and this was the final issue and it was also a hardcover format with dust jacket reprinting comic strips from the newspapers in black and white interior color cover released in may of 1933 
Kellogg's published a Buck Rogers in the 25th Century comic. It was a free giveaway, one shot, size was 6 by 8 inches, saddle stitched, and featured new content. A few other oddball comic related books to come out in 1933 included A Lot of Ballyhoo, a magazine size square bound reprint book put out by Dell Comics in black and white, just one issue. The publisher Farrer and Reinhardt put out a one shot called The Little King, an 80 page book, color cover, black and white interior, the size was 10 and a quarter by 8 and 3 quarters. This was a hardcover book with a dust jacket and featured reprints. And Zane Epi published Famous Comics. There was nine issues in this 24 page free newsprint comic book. 1933, a very historic year. It was the birth of the idea of Superman from Siegel and Schuster. It was the beginning of the 10 cent new comic books. It was the invention of the new modern format, which is still in use to today. And it gave the birth of a new growing empire, which all the publishers would expand over the next few years. 